was asked today in church to give a lesson and talk on being anxiously engaged. You must have a clear objective in your own engagement. That is what you're working towards and for is that end result. And this is why I believe that in order to be anxiously engaged, that you personally need to have a solid foundation so you can have something to stand on. You can have the confidence to anxiously engage in that work. You also need to have the cornerstones, which is going to be your sweat equity, the time put into it, your knowledge gained from your personal examples, things that you've learned along the way and other people that have helped inspire you and the keystone as to why you're doing this from the beginning anyway. You need to have all these simple things put in place so that you can have the confidence, the knowledge, the power, the wisdom, the inspiration to get the end result. The talent is something that you have spent time and time and time again developing it. I believe that we are born with talents and that it's our job, it's our job to discover those talents, to find those talents, to explore those talents possibilities and spend time working on how you can be the best at that, whatever that is, because that is something that you're truly designed for. And your talents can bless others. Your talents do come with a natural tendency to share this message or this thing. And so you have it in you, if you haven't discovered it yet, it's there, just be open-minded to the possibilities because when it feels good with you, when you resonate with it, you're gonna know. As a child, my parents enrolled me in dance and I really liked to dance. In fact, I enjoy dancing quite a bit. And I was in tap and jazz and ballet and, and a little hula hula dancing class growing up. And then after that, I wasn't enrolled in dance anymore. It was sports and other activities. And then later on in high school, I entered into the drill team, which was like a dance team with uh, a lot of like structure of like rigid stuff as well with high kicks and you know, sharp movement. Well, I had thought at one point, oh, you know what? I think I'm a really good dancer. So I'm probably gonna be like a professional dancer, maybe because I think I'm good at it. But really it was, I was kind of good at it, but I just enjoyed it. Dancing was a hobby. I had a profound moment. One of those moments that just your mind and your, your heart and your spirit, just everything inside you and about you opens up and reminds you of what it is that you're here to do. What it is that you have been partly designed to be a part of and share. And that moment happened when I was 11 years old. One day, I went to work with my dad. My dad was the chief of police in a small town. And as I was sitting there in his office at his desk, he had these plastic, look like Ziploc baggy ties. And I was just playing with them and realized that they got really, really, really tight and played with some more, played with some more, put one on me, cut it off. My dad turned around and said, what are you doing? Please stop doing that. And I was like, okay. So I was looking for other things to do while I was there at work with him, just passing the time away. And he was called out of his office. 
And when he was, he stopped and turned around and looked at me and said, hey, 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 you sit right there. Just don't move. And I was like, okay, well, I just wonder how long he's gonna be gone. I, I don't really know. So I'll sit here. What are those books over there? Oh, there's books. Oh, looks like there's pictures over there. So, I mean, I just wanted to get up to go look at some pictures. So I got up from his desk and I walked over and I grabbed this three ring binder that I saw had some like Polaroid snapshots in there. Now, warning, be careful what you look at because that will be engraved in your brain forever. You may hear something in your life and it goes in one ear and out the other. You may smell something in your life and that smell will resonate with you as to what you like, what you don't like in smells. Your interest in faves can change over the years, but if you've ever smelled homemade bread being baked in the oven, you're gonna remember that smell or the smell of popcorn when you walk into a movie theater. You know, um, you're gonna have your favorite smells. But what you look at as well, what you look at will stay with you forever, forever. So be mindful what you choose to look at and to watch because it could also be self-destructive. So please, by all means, always look at good, clean things because whatever you see, those are your thoughts or your thoughts are your thoughts. So you want to think good things. You want to say good things. You want to do good things. And if you have a choice to look at something good or bad, choose the good. Always choose the good. I opened up the three ring binder and that from right away, I was mesmerized and trapped. Not mesmerized in an awe sort of way, but like, what is this that I'm looking at? Well, just to cut to, there was an investigation going on of abuse. And I saw picture after picture of the body that had been abused, children and women. And the things that I saw in those pictures, as an 11 year old, even if I was an adult, it cut you to the core that one, somebody could do that to somebody else. Oh, I couldn't even fathom why somebody would want to hurt somebody else, why? Second thing, the look in their eyes, the victims from the physical pain, the look in their eyes from sadness from not knowing what it was maybe they did wrong or why were they treated this way and all of a sudden in this moment I felt like I was a fly on the wall in every picture that I saw it's as if I visualized deeply what happened to them and how they felt in that moment. I became just encompassed in these pictures and the stories that the pictures tell because pictures tell a story. Words are tools that shape your life, but pictures tell the story. And I visualized every moment and I didn't realize it, but I was like in this trance and tears, sheets of tears, sheets of tears. I've never had sheets of tears. I couldn't speak. It's like my throat was sealed. I didn't know that I was even breathing, but just what I saw was so, so sad. And all I knew is my face was warm. My body was hot and my face was wet. 
And the next thing I know, I see a vision at the doorway and I turn and it was my dad. And the look on his face, he was like, oh my gosh, he was sulking. And he runs into his office and he slides it on his knees and he picks me up and he holds me. And he said, why? Why did you look at those pictures? Why? And I just got out of my trance and I was like, I don't know. But I knew at that moment that I wanted to be somebody to help other people to never, ever, ever get hurt. To never, ever, ever be that person that doesn't know what to do. I don't want anyone to get hurt. And I wanted to protect them. I wanted them to protect themselves and have a look on their face of confidence. And at that moment, I knew that I wanted to be a protector. I didn't know how that was going to happen. I just knew that was the objective. Protect people, okay? So now, little did I know that just two years later, that my family would enroll all of us kids in the martial arts. I was just the kid that never quit. I was anxiously engaged in martial arts throughout my entire life. I've never stopped, okay? I've been training for 34 years. So I've spent time, a lot of time in the martial arts in numerous, numerous areas that I'm gonna share with you. College and I think I want to be involved in dancing. I'm gonna do a little bit of dancing. So I decided to figure out where that was going to be. And I went to UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso. And I saw an ad in some paper that said tryouts for a diamond girl for the professional baseball team, the Diablos. And so I got the time and the date and the location and I put on my cutest little dress and my heels and I went down to that office and I knocked on the door and the lady answered and she just had this big bright smile on her face. She goes, please come in, how can I help you? And I said, well, I'm here to try out Hauser. Now, Ingeborg Hauser was from Germany, and she was a protege to Tatiana Golbowski. And she came to the United States, and she was amazing. She was profound. She was brilliant. She created the first dance company, professional dance company, in Texas. She passed away some time ago, because this is again, 1989, and she was a little older at the time, but the things that she had accomplished up until that moment, and even then some, what she had developed and discovered about herself in all those decades that she was alive, and her contributions, and how she anxiously engaged and danced she was the best of the best. And so, this is what happened on my first day. Go to the dance class, the ballet class, and she has all the new students. There were quite a bit of new students in this very large dance room. She had us all lay down on the floor and she 
put us, are told us to go to this, like what's, I guess in yoga, you refer to like a, a, a goddess pose where your feet are together, your knees are out to the side, and you're laying on your back. And she has a German accent and she walked by each person that was laying on the ground and she had her assistant, she had her little entourage and she would walk by and she would make a comment and as she walked by all the different people, the girls, she would say, good, good, okay, excellent, marvelous, pretty good. And then she got to me and I was like, words are tools that shape your life. Which word is she going to use with me? And she got to me and she said, Nain! And I was like, uh oh, I don't think that's good. And it's how she said it, really, it was how she said it. Like, I knew something wasn't right. And she says, Your mother is not a frog. And I just looked around and people were like, oh. And because your mother is not a frog, I will not pay attention to you. You need to get out and leave. You need to go. You waste your time. Wow. She had confidence. She had amazing confidence. I loved it. And I'm so grateful and thankful that she does not and did not ever have a room full of tadpoles. Nope, because if your mother wasn't a frog, then apparently you are gonna be a good ballerina. Because there was just something she says about the knees and flexibility, she could tell right away and of course she could. This is what she spent her life on. And why, why, why would she spend time with me and other tadpoles that weren't going to amount to a ballerina? I mean, no matter how hard you bang the hammer, never fit a square peg into a round hole. So how grateful I was to her to show me and tell me I might as well leave. I'm wasting my time. It's not going to be a talent. If it's a hobby, it's not going to be with her. I mean, she was there to help develop more talent in others. And that is just a wonderful thing to have such the confidence and the wisdom to be able to tell people what it is to help them on their path. So I called up the cheer coach that hired me and I said, hey, when do we start dance practices? And she says, oh, don't, don't worry. Like you got this, you already got this. And I said, well, I haven't performed for you. I haven't danced yet. She goes, oh, no, 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 honey. Um, you're hired on your looks because you got those dimples and you're just so cute. And I was like, oh. So, needless to say, I did not pursue the professional cheerleading career. I just continued to train in martial arts. I loved it so much and everything about it just felt so right. I wanted to just engage all that I could about the martial arts. Mine was definitely geared towards self-defense. And so I decided that I need to have more and more and more experience in this field. And so I became uh, certified as a law enforcement instructor. I became a firearms instructor. I also decided to teach uh, bodyguards how to be better protectors of their principles. And so I decided because of that, I needed to learn what they do. So I became a bodyguard myself and I got licensed in a couple different states and I even learned about evasive driving. So when I'm protecting somebody, how can we get away really, really fast if that's what is needed? And then I even decided to fly planes. And so I have flown planes because when someone is hired as a personal protection officer, 
they want to be able to have confidence that the person that's protecting them can drive in a car super fast in various scenarios because the people that you protect are going to be anywhere from political uh, people to um, royalty to famous people people that just have a lot of money um, or possessions you just so many different types of again scenarios that I needed to have experience with and so I began studying for my pilot's license and I have flown um, planes and that has been just a fabulous experience but I totally was anxiously engaged in the activity of learning to protect many different and as a parent and a teacher you just cannot compel somebody to do what it is that you want them to do you can teach with example and with love and with positivity and inspiration but definitely have the confidence the knowledge and the wisdom to share those lessons we are our own steward it is up to us we have our free will and i can promise you that when you're not lined up correctly rightly with your agency you're not going to be happy it's not just about though being just happy it's happy and satisfied with the choices that you've made and if you did not make the right choices you're not going to feel so good so don't lie to yourself you want to always be sure that you are engaged anxiously in good works you will love the results and the fruits of your labor just think you are an example to other people that look at you and upon you for guidance and inspiration i was so thankful for that German ballet teacher who guided me to get out of her classroom, that that wasn't for me. I totally appreciate that and I honor that. And I appreciate all my martial arts instructors and their leadership with their confidence and their wisdom and their knowledge to help me who I am today to do the things that I've been able to do. But if you do not have the time put in to your service there's no way that you can help other people you first have to help yourself you have to be anxiously engaged and bring on the training the studying the learning the time and develop those talents that you can be whatever it is that's needed in that particular scenario in that circumstance you know it's not easy it's never easy for something that's worthwhile. I mean, it comes with the cost, totally comes with the cost. Again, look back at the example that our Savior Jesus Christ gave to us. Look at the cost. He took upon all the sins of the world. He suffered, he bled from every pore. He was crucified. The worst, worst way you could die. And he suffered for all of our sins. So. It wasn't easy, guarantee you though, he knows it was worth it because he had a clear objective and a mission. And so just like in the martial arts, in any worthy endeavor that you have, it's not going to be easy. Believe me, I have had many a stitches, many, many stitches. I've had torn muscles and gashed in the head and like big old contusions and I have, uh, torn ligaments, I have surgeries and screws of both knees and blood and uh, torn ab muscles and all these things, these are wonderful things. You know, it's all just part of it and I'm sure that our savior would do it again because he knows what the end result is. And I loved and love every bit of training in the martial arts and I continue to pursue martial arts training even though I've sold my school recently. I don't have to be a school owner to anxiously engage in my talents of martial arts and share those because I do share those with my husband and my grandchildren and my children and continue to teach and train all the time and I absolutely love it. But it does come with a price. Parent and a teacher you just cannot compel somebody to do what it is that you want them to do. 
you can teach with example and with love and with positivity and inspiration, but definitely have the confidence, the knowledge and the wisdom to share those lessons. We are our own steward. It is up to us. We have our free will. And I can promise you that when you're not lined up correctly, rightly with your agency, you're not going to be happy. It's not just about though being just happy. It's happy and satisfied with the choices that you've made. And if you did not make the right choices, you're not gonna feel so good. So don't lie to yourself. You wanna always be sure that you are engaged anxiously in good works. You will love the results and the fruits of your labor. Just think, you are an example to other people that look at you and upon you for guidance and inspiration. I was so thankful for that German ballet teacher who guided me to get out of her classroom, that that wasn't for me. I totally appreciate that and I honor that. And I appreciate all my martial arts instructors and their leadership with their confidence and their wisdom and their knowledge to help me who I am today to do the things that I've been able to do. As a business owner, I love business. I love work ethic. I love it from other people. I expect it of myself. I actually enjoy work. I really do. I think it was just how I was designed. That's why I believe it's so important to teach your children and do not be easy on your kids. Lord have mercy, do not. That is the worst thing to do. They need chores. They need to help build character. Give them responsibility and accountability. It helps to build who they are. I can say that from experience because I know we had chores growing up as kids. We had consequences of good behavior and bad behavior. We had consequences of doing what is right and doing the right thing and not making the right choice. So it's okay to let your children suffer the consequence, but definitely guide them. You are there, you are the chicken, not the egg. The chicken came first, then the egg, okay? So let's just make sure we've established that right off the bat. But help your kids and start them at an early age. We had chores responsibilities growing up and we took pride in our chores. And that I believe has helped me in my life to be anxiously engaged in my work and in good works and any worthy endeavor. So I do have high expectations of other people because I just expect that for myself and for the services that I also receive. And I absolutely adore and cherish and love my grandbaby so much. And so as I was preparing for this lesson and this talk, I decided, let me ask the babies. Let me ask the babies some questions about what they know of a great example of our Savior Jesus Christ. Again, because he is the ultimate example of being anxiously engaged. And he said, he helps us. Sissy, what do you know about Jesus? And she said, he loves us. And then Jack said, he has love for others. And Sissy said, he made us and he teaches us. My other granddaughter and I asked her, what do you know about Jesus? And Carter Shea said, he protects the animals. But then I think about the approach that you have. You know, as a master martial artist, was my job to go out there in the community and kick everybody's butt to tell them how good I was? Come on, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. If you wanna learn, I'm gonna kick your butt. Like, that's not a good approach. Nope, mm -mm. The Savior had a perfect way of sharing his message of love. And so when I think about being anxiously engaged, I think about if somebody wanted to feed the birds and they drove by a park and the ground was full of birds and they had a clear objective. I want to feed the birds, all of them. And so they grabbed two loaves of bread and they put those loaves of bread on their shoulders and they ran through the park, ran through just, just hoping those birds would come and just eat that bread. No, the birds immediately, they just flew away, they flocked away. 
He had an idea, but he didn't have the foundation. He didn't have the cornerstone, the keystone. He didn't have the structure. He didn't have the system in place. He didn't have the time, the training, the experience spent on how to feed the birds. Instead, one day, he went to the park and he put the loaves of bread on his lap and sat at the park bench. And he took a chunk of bread off. He just tossed it by his feet. He just gently tossed the bread by his feet. And slowly but surely, birds would land at his feet. And more and more and more landed. More and more and more came. And he tossed the bread at his feet. And the birds ate. And the birds were fed. And that is how you approach things, how you can share your talents. You don't scream at the top of your lungs. I got a message, I'm talented. Do it in a creative way that's approachable, that can resonate with other people. Be anxiously engaged in good works and do good things and see good things, think good things, say good things because you are your thoughts. You manifest those thoughts. And I wanted to share this message with you and hope that you can be anxiously engaged in your life and be that example for other people. Help me be that inspiration. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. Have a great day.